All right, hello, hello, everybody. Starting a minute early because I still don't trust Restream with the sound. So let me say hi to everybody. And obviously, if the mic is freaking out, let me know. I guess I should maybe keep an eye on the bottom of the chat first to figure that out. So I'll say hi to who I see down here. Hi, Jandon. Hi, Tiffany. Hi, Mr. Crow. Hi, Cat. Hi, Annie Kurtz. Hi, Tom Cooper. Hi, Pete Thomas. Hi, Turkle Tom. Let me see. Hi, Forensics of Evil. Thank you so much for being here. Hi, Samantha. And let me see. Hi, Dave Steege. Hi, Don Lambert. So nice to see you. I don't know if I said hi, Tom Cooper, but hello again if I did. Sorry, guys. I just don't want to miss anybody. Let me see. Hi, Welsh Republic. And hi, Jay Snyder. And let's see. And all right, R. I don't know who R is. And Tawny C. No worries. I don't remember what time it is over there. I wish that I did. I'm so sorry. And hey, Soil Lodge. And hi, Racine and Auntie Green. Okay. I th and hi, Anna, the inbred Nazi. Okay. I think that I am caught up. All right. So, huh. All wheat car has entered the conversation. Isn't that fascinating? Hi, bug dude. Uh, so, I think that I'm probably just going to address, like, at the beginning of the stream, we'll kind of go through what's been going on on Twitter, HyperSW. Um, that way I can re-clarify, even though we already discussed it, my points about, uh, you know, Wheat's family and Wheat herself, because quite frankly... Hi, uh, wait, I missed somebody. Hi, Lazarus. Um, yeah, Wheat Cesar. Yeah, that's right. Well, you know, um, I have caught Wheat in a flat out lie, uh, in my opinion. She is, she was misrepresenting information and I think it's on purpose. Uh, but I've already told you guys, I don't trust her. She's welcome in the chat if she wants to come in because I know that she knows who I am because I've heard it from more than one person. Uh, and I'm not like taking credit, not getting a pat on the back for anything. However, you wouldn't be vehemently denying something if it was irrelevant or if it was untrue, if you were not able to prove it. This is just how things play out factually. Hi, Ivermectin. Hola. Never trusted Ginger who worships the dog. Shut up, Lazarus. Uh, to, well, I don't know if she's ginger because like, well, no, I guess one photo that I've seen. Yeah, it does show her hair. So, but I mean, hey, uh, redheads are a thing i could get into it you know it's whatever i'm going gray like my hair is going white guys so it is what it is but uh let's go ahead and let's run the intro and then we're gonna get into wheat first because i kind of feel like this was all delayed for some reason i'm not insinuating the person that is communicating for wheat or by wheat or because of wheat of their own volition, maybe not. I'm not accusing them at all. And I've made it very clear that my maybe negative vibes are not directed at them whatsoever. Uh, I think that Wheat should grow a set and come in and, uh, you know, refute me. And don't say that you went and did some research because I don't give a damn. I want to see paperwork. And hi, Fire Pixie. And hello, Lex. And hello, Chartreuse Cat. Hello, hello. All right, let's run it, guys. I'm on the quest to touch a hundred mil before I lay myself to rest. Seeing them look like I turn the beam on. A savage on the fucking run of you, the bomber wreaking heaven, singing sad songs. Red rum murder and grape inside of my mind. Pull up to your funeral and kill everybody inside. Got the load of bust a hammer, hit the nail and crucify. Tie your body up in the dungeon and make your soul mine. Death note, got a page with your name on it. Put this line to your head like a fucking comet.
Don't forget, we are uh, literally out here fighting demons, y'all. Hi, Eric G. Thank you so much for being here. And let me see. Hi, Jane in Scotland. And hi, Danny Crook. And hi, David Tooley. Okay, I think that we are all caught up. And yeah, Ivermectin, if your eyes are hurting, don't watch. It's okay. Like, you know, it's whatever. Who's going to come in and do something? Like, who cares? Seriously. I'm just a stupid little channel, right? Like, bring it on, whatever. Anyways, so I figured that we would keep this first part very simple uh, in regards to the conversation with, I don't know if it's a sock puppet. Hi, Spacey. This is your first live. Well, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. I try to keep up with the, with the chat as much as I can, but uh, I'm going to show you guys my first thread just so you guys can see it, okay? Because this is going to be like the easiest way. Because I think that the thread was pretty concise. However, uh, obviously wheat doesn't feel that way. Yeah. Hi, Joyce S. Hello. Thank you so much for being here. All right. So let's go ahead and get the old, uh, I'm calling it Twitter. I don't care. You can't make me do anything. Can't make me call it something else. It is Twitter. And hi, Roller Podger. I don't know what that means, but that's very cute. Okay. So this was just me trying to kind of catch up my Twitter. So right here, I am showing specifically right here. You guys saw this last time. This was Sam being drafted, right? This was the public announcement in the newspaper listing him as Michael Samuel Carr. I also include up here what is shown in the registry. This all times up. That's March, I believe, 1942. And then this is May. And over here, we have his marriage certificate to Francis and see his dad is named Michael. Yeah. So I'm stating here that I, this, shows to me that he is Sam Carr II and that the activities of Michael Carr in the Church of Scientology's, I did mistype this. It is the American St. Hill organization in LA in 1968, I believe. Uh, Virginia corrected me on that. I apologize, but I'm not paying for a blue check to be able to edit these things. Um, but that I believe that it is Sam and it is not his son. And then right here, because I did need to fix this as well. So let me see if I can zoom in. Oh, I can. Look at that. So fancy. Okay. So this is Auditor Magazine number 42, 1968, showing Michael Carr is clear number 1405. And I point out because I feel like it cannot be understated. Michael Carr went clear the year before Heber Gentsch, the polygamist Mormon who would take the reins after L. Ron Hubbard's disappearance, because you guys already know how I feel about L. Ron Hubbard. Uh, I do believe that he was <clears throat> taken out and there are other people much smarter than me and some people that knew him who agree with me. It would appear that Sam got the fast track treatment to clear as Heber did. And this is probably going to be pretty blurry, but yeah, I don't think, well, it's not going to let me do it. Whatever. I have it on the PowerPoint. And then right here, Auditor Magazine number 110, April 1975, Michael Carr's success story, which gives off, I just got back from the farm. It was fantastic vibes. And right here, this is going to keep screwing up. Okay, no. So finishing the briefing course is like growing up. When I think back on how ignorant of the mechanisms and rules of life I was, it surprises me how well I was able to function. Now, of course, my understanding of life, all its aspects, has vastly increased. Training is indispensable to anyone. And uh, I always got to include a pic of Hubbard if I can. And I just thought that this was really funny. If it isn't announced in the auditor, it didn't happen. Send it in and make it a fact. And down here, so this is the discrepancy in relation to Michael Vale Carr III. Not a discrepancy, but this is the separation of the father and the son, guys. Now, we're not going to go back through Arnie's blog. The link is there if you guys want to read it. But Michael Vale Carr III, clear number 8963, is cited in the Auditor Magazine, number 152, April 1979. He died roughly six months later, and as the late Arnie Lerma stated, uh, Carr was ordered to take his life, also known as an EOC, or end-of-life cycle. And this is going to be where things get super fun when we tie in the process. But 
I would prefer to stick with this in uh, my PowerPoint specifically. So let me see if I can back out of that really quick. That way you guys can see that. And then right here. So as for the late Michael Vale Carr III, he appears to be the key connecting the process to the Carr family and the son of Sam Crimes. And then I'll show you guys this in my slide, but I just kind of put all of that together now. And again, I'm not blaming this person at all whatsoever, but, and I don't know who they are and they've been very kind to me. They've been very polite and I feel bad. I've been trying to be polite. I'm not trying to like come at them or anything, but they said that weed is denying this. She said her dad was never in Scientology and that his name is only Samuel Carr with no Michael. He's never listed with Michael in his name, only Samuel Carr with no middle name. Can you find his real birth certificate? And then I state here, when it comes to certain vehement denials, I pretend it's opposite day. A, that's the draft announcement and lines up with his listing in the service. B, her brother was the third. Grandpa is first. No luck on a birth certificate yet, but that does not negate it or nor does her denial. That is my opinion. And that is my opinion. Now, I believe that this is what Wheat provided this person. Okay. And it says it looks like Wheat, Wheat's father, Sam, had a father named Andrew Carr. And then Andrew's father was Michael Carr. So Wheat's great grandfather was Michael Carr. So, Andrew, we've looked through this. Remember the tree surgeon where I told you guys I thought that that was like so fun and some of my UK peeps <laughs> said that uh, that's what it's called there. So I, I love that. But however, here we go. We have Sam and Francis's marriage certificate. Samuel Carr, father, Michael, right? Okay. And Andrew, Andrew's not the father. Okay, he's not. Because if this is what Wheat provided, Wheat was being very disingenuous in my opinion. Because Andrew is getting married to Miss Leonora Dolores Ibetson, I think. And right there is Michael and Helen. These are the exact same parents that are listed. The exact same. From Sam's. And then down here, this is another sibling. This is Pauline. Is it Pauline? Yeah, it's Pauline. I didn't mark this one in red, but on the right side, right over here, you can see father's full name, Michael Carr, and mother's maiden name, Melhana Djamba. I know I'm saying that wrong. And let me see if I have the last thing. Oh, no, I started another thread. Bear with me. All right, we're going to keep this open. Hey, 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 look, there's my process stuff right at the beginning. All right, so... What I did here specifically is showing the correlation between all three listing their parents the exact same. The spelling of the last name of the mom is a little bit off. In my personal opinion, I think that this is done on purpose. Uh, I don't care if people think that that's like super noited. I've literally shown you guys with the process themselves, <laughs> the changing of their names. So it's really not a stretch. However, the debate about the changing of the last name from Czar to Carr, that's an open debate. I'm with you on that. I am fully with you there. We don't know when that happened. However, the youngest son, Samuel, Siblings, Daniel, Andrew, Pauline, and Julia. So, Wheat, whatever, it is what it is. I've already said I don't trust you. I don't think you're a trustworthy person. It has nothing to do with that book. People can say that it does, but it doesn't. I don't trust you from the newspapers alone. You guys were trying to sell the dog, sell your story, and then turn around and say that you're victims. And we're going to look at those again just to kind of uh, drive that point home. You know what I mean? Let me see. Gin oh, oh, hi, Ginger. Hello. Wheat has no idea I'm on Twitter with Dana talking about her. I'm sorry. I mean, I know that people have shared this with her. More than one person has told me. And again, Ginger, I'm not coming at you at all. And I don't want you to feel that way. 
and I hope that I was able to express that as genuinely as one can express that on Twitter. You know what I mean? But um, that that's a misrepresentation on her behalf. And the whole, like, we've done research at this library. Do, 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 do. I don't care. That's irrelevant to me. That proves nothing to me. Because I've shown with the DeGrimstons specifically, as well as pretty much every other Processian, they just... The names change. There's no proof. I want proof. I want proof. There has to be records. There has to be records. I'm sorry. If you're going to tell me otherwise, because I've put all this together and, and Virginia has helped me so, so much. You got to come with more than your word. Your word doesn't mean anything here. Let me see. Sam Carr makes the farm sound like a massage parlor. Yeah, I don't disagree. Let me see. Sorry, guys. I'm just trying to catch up here. And did Maury prove he's not the father? <laughs> Stop it. That's silly. Okay. And that poor girl was mercilessly teased as a child. Who was teased as a child mercilessly? Wait, it sounds like she has been watching that paternity court show too much. He is not the father. Yeah, that's kind of how I felt. I'm like, this isn't like a daytime talk show. You're going to have to come in with a little bit more than that. You know what I mean? Andrew Carr lives in Bronxville. He was busted during World War II for gas coupon fraud when he operated a gas station on Warburton. He's been quiet ever since. Yeah, I bet. I love you, Dana. I'm just looking into the cars also. Well, I love you right back, Ginger. And don't take it personally. I do, uh, you know, maybe harbor some. Well, I definitely don't trust her. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. Let me see. And Cream of Wheat is a song by Ed Gein's car. I have no idea what you guys are talking about. You guys are shot out. Okay, now I wanted to show you guys this one auditor magazine that Virginia showed me. And I want you guys, hold on, hold on. Because if you, if Virginia happens to pop in here, she can tell you when I, saw this, I completely lost my mind. And you're going to understand why. I might get laggy for just a second, guys. Hold on. Let me get this pulled up. Okay. Because you guys know we've looked at the process, right? So we kind of know what that looks like. Now, I am going to show you guys auditor number 13 and then we're going to look at auditor number 14. The timing of this is right around the time that Hubbard is starting the Guardian's office. Why is that relevant? Well, because this is also right around the time that the DeGrimstons are being declared suppressive people. Suppressive people, right? Except for there's like no fair game being ran on them. Yeah. So I'm going to show you the first one, auditor number 13. We're not going to read it. Just want you to look at it. Okay. And then I'm going to show you the absolute insanity of the following one. That happens to time up with the uh, DeGrimstons specifically being declared uh, SPs. So let me get this ready. Okay. So this is the auditor number 13. Doesn't really look that crazy, right? Nothing, nothing real wild. There you go. Eh, Scientology, blah, 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 blah. Okay, great. Now, I would like for you to think of the game from the process book. Think of the game. Think of the art. Think of the visuals. Because when I saw this, I said, what the hell am I looking at? I couldn't believe that this was the auditor because this is the only one that looks like this. The only one. Now, here we go. Look at this. Look at this. Does this not look like some processy and BS? Look at this. There goes the old ball game. The day of total freedom is here. Create a universe of your own. Get on the road to total freedom. 
history is about to be written out loud. This looks like that process book, y'all. What does this say? Men are prisoners of themselves and only the truth can set them free. I'm going to be completely honest with you. I want this as like a poster on my wall. Like seriously, this thing is sick. But yo, like the propaganda, the propaganda game is strong with this one. Hubbard, chef's kiss. Why isn't this scooting up? There we go. But tell me that this does not look like some weird process map. Look at that. Clear means total freedom. That straight up looks like the process. This is literally the only one that has color like that. Like that. That's the only one. It's, it's so weird. When I looked at it, I was like screaming on the phone with Virginia. I'm like, what the hell am I looking at right now? Like, seriously. Now, let me find, yeah, I got to show you the next one to show you why this is relevant. So you just saw 13 and 14. Let's just take a peek at 15 and see what 15 looks like. Yeah, and you tell me. Uh, one of these things is not like the other. There you go. Yeah. So tell me that he's starting the Guardian's office right around the time of that last one. Looking like some real processy and bullshit to me. Excuse my language. And then we're going right back to basics, baby. Telling you, Hubbard, chef's kiss. The uh, most successful intelligence operative of all time in the propaganda game. Very, very strong. Let me see. Uh, she just answered a little while ago. Well, let's see what she says. And I wonder if the cars ever had a song with wheat in the title or lyrics. You guys are talking about steroids. Wheat said no, Sam wasn't. Sam wasn't what? I don't understand. Prussian blue ink. Yeah, it's, it's very rich. But man, I would love to have it as a poster. It's freaking sick. I like it. I mean, but I... But I mean, it's the propaganda. It works, right? Like, it very much so works. Let me see. I wonder if Wheat has feared for her own family, considering the fate of her brothers. Um, well, here's what I'm going to say about that. I'm just going to be honest with you guys. I don't think that Wheat fears for anything except for what she can lose. She's had a lot to gain. Okay. Um, and her age, I, sorry, sorry. I'm being extremely critical and I understand that. I don't feel great about it, but I'm not going to lie to you guys. And I'm going to be honest. So I don't trust her at all. I don't believe her whatsoever. And sorry, I'm going to need proof. Get a birth certificate. Get a birth record. Seriously. Um, and the whole, like, your dad wasn't in Scientology. You were literally 16 years old. Okay? <laughs> you were a baby. Sorry. Frontal lobe, not fully developed. Don't care. Really don't care. Wheat's not going to jail anytime soon, so she feels free to roam the internet. Like I said, I'm not trying to, uh, you know, adjudicate anybody in the court of public opinion or in a court of law. Um, but I do not think that weed is innocent at all <laughs> whatsoever. Uh, I think it's just, you know, kind of bizarre that she vehemently denies certain things. Well, okay, whatever you say. People have uh, seemed to get kind of weird since we've started digging into these uh, auditor magazines. Yeah, a little bit. I think that we can all agree just a little bit. Now, the main topic of today is going to be discussing what Virginia, this is all Virginia straight up, heard like no one where to look because we had talked about it when we showed that Michael Carr was the photographer, right, in New York. And I said, we're working to figure out who those people are in that photo. Well, no, this isn't like open and shut case, Johnson. Sprinkle some crack on him and call it a day. However, 
I am going to present to you guys two pieces of evidence and everyone can consider. Because again, I would like everyone to keep in mind the stuff with the process. They had 20 different names, okay? So I think that this is most likely a fake name. I looked for these people. Uh, I think Ancestry reminded me that it was like two months ago because it tells you the last time that you looked them up. I literally spent an entire day trying to find these three people and I knew I would come back to them someday. And uh, well, today is that day. I couldn't find anything on them, but the newspaper article I'm going to show you first, you all know, you all know it if you know the process. So let's go ahead and let's take a quick peek. And here we go. So... This is the Sunday Mirror, the 14th of September, 1969. The Satan worshippers bring in their friends, friends, familiars, yeah? And they call him the Christ of Carnaby Street. Okay. And right here. So these three boys, these three fellas, who they is, huh? They're so cool looking. I do like that dude's fringe on his jacket. Actually, I think both of them have fringe. They look pretty fly. All right. Now, I mean, these dogs look very uh, pleasant. Like they should be out in public. Yeah. Sorry. Um, and I love dogs. However, right here. So three quote unquote close friends of the process. Tom Bird, Henry Bratton, and Robert Miller. All are 19. Yeah. Okay, now, I think that we are going to get the deets that we're going to explore in the next page. However, him, that is Robert Miller. Now, this guy, well, he seems to be the person that could very well be connecting directly from the cars to the process. And again, I'm not here to tell anybody what to think. I've never, I've never said that at all. Uh, do I have my biases? Yes, but I'm human. And for anybody to expect otherwise, I mean, come on, we're, that's not really being realistic. You know what I mean? But let me pull this up. This is a little bit more of a detailed story. So again, same paper, September 14th, 1969. Yeah. So the three Americans now plan now on the QE2 plan to join with four others already in London, where they will all live together in one house. Some process followers travel around the world recruiting new members, and there has been a big membership drive in America. Let me make sure I'm not missing anything up here like a dummy. Okay, so... Leader of the three, all age 19, is Robert Miller, who owned a newspaper in Massachusetts, which he has sold. Okay, you're 19 years old. I don't buy that necessarily. With him are Thomas Bird, a pianist from Detroit, and Henry Bratton, son of an American car engineer. Those already in London include Robert Miller's wife, Geraldine. The three dogs with them will be handed over to members of the French process chapter when the ship docks briefly at Le, Har Le Havre, Le Havre, I don't know, I'm a hillbilly. Before they sailed from New York, Robert Miller told my colleague, Brian Hitchin, we are not actually joining the process, not yet anyway. We are just close friends. We are not rich, but if we had any money, we would give it all to the process. Okay. Now, that is where we are going to leave that. And now we are going to enter again the PowerPoint. And no, it's not a great photo. However, I don't think that Virginia is wrong. I think that this is something to consider, quite frankly, because this is a different time, guys. We have to, again, in context, keep these things in mind. So, in the April 1979 Auditor Number 152 issue, where the photo taken by Michael Carr, Robert Miller is in this photo. It says it down here. Okay. Crappy photo. I get it. It sucks. Guess what? You look up Robert Miller in New York, you look him up in the UK. I've also tried looking up his wife. Can't find a dang thing. 
but that truck belongs to him. So obviously uh, he's just no random. Uh, I don't know. I would say Joe Schmo, but Bob, I don't know. I was going to say Bob with bitch tits, but that's not really appropriate. And I don't know if he has them, but that's just something to consider because that means that that person is going from here to the UK right around the time that the process is getting official in the UK. Because let's not forget, they weren't official in the UK before they came to the States. They just weren't. I found that charity commissioner filing, guys. They were incorporated here as a charity, whatever, before they were in the UK, which is just real weird. It's just weird. It's weird to me. But there we have Robert Miller. And they do look similar. Even from far away, they just look similar. And I could be wrong. And when I find who it is, if I can find, if that's a real name, I don't think it is. Because I've looked that up. I looked that up a long time ago. Tried to find a newspaper that was owned by any Miller at that time in that place. Can't find it. Can't find the wife either. So I don't know who they are. However... If that person's going over and they're just hanging out with the process, but then you also have Robert Miller in New York at that time in the New York org, and he was a high-ranking Scientologist as well. Well, I told you guys when we first pulled that slide up, Michael Carr III would not be published in the Auditor magazine at all. Taking a photo like that if those people were not important and if he was not important. It is what it is. Um, like I said, I'm not telling anybody what to think, but right now that is technically the closest connection that we have at the moment. And it's just at the moment. We've barely scratched the surface, quite frankly, but at least we're getting somewhere. Uh, you know, I don't know. It is what it is. Now, I'm going to see if the archive is working because it wasn't working a little while ago, which was making me feel a little bit noited. Um, and if it's not, fine. I'm just going to drop the link in the chat. But I am going to show you guys specifically. Did it load? Of course it didn't load. This stupid piece of crap. Whatever. Okay. So I'm going to drop in here and maybe it will work for you guys. So... This is a magazine that Virginia found in the archive. This is an old process magazine. Okay. Now, in the very... Yeah, see, the stupid pictures won't load. I'm telling you, we're out here fighting demons, y'all. Uh, some of the pictures will load. Maybe there's a lot of traffic. Who knows? But trying to order the original of that. However... And I need you guys to understand, I am not like a LaRouche head, okay? And I'm not. However, people can point out truths and still be untrustworthy people. Yeah? So in a second, because I'm going to look at the chat, I'm going to show you guys a LaRouche article that is very relevant to this. Because... Uh, old LaRouche was getting in a lot of trouble with uh, John Markham, who was definitely helping out the process. But there is a photo in there that will not load now. And it kind of looks like Robert Miller hanging out at their thrift shop. Okay? So just some food for thought. And like I said, I'm not. you guys don't have to agree with me. Uh, it's okay. And I'm happy for people to uh, challenge me. But I, I got to have more than your word. Sorry. Sorry, wait. That word don't cut it, honey. Let me see. They look like the fields of Nephilim. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Let me see. Hi, cat. Let me see. They all wished they were Leon Russell, Johnny Winter. I have no idea what you guys are talking about. I'm sorry. I don't want to sit here and read it like the uh, chalk demon man boobs. <laughs> Let me see. His name is Robert Paulson. Not the wrench, but the rest. I wonder if Robert Millar. Uh, I don't know. I've tried. I always try spelling variations just because you'll find crazy stuff. Because I'm going to show you guys. I 
tried a different spelling in the newspaper when I was on the phone with Virginia when we were trying to hunt this stuff down and it was phew, new archives again. All kinds of new stuff again. Because I've got Robert de Grimston hanging out with Arthur Gibson. Yeah, from the Vatican. They're hanging out in New York. Because the Vatican just keeps entering the chat because they can't resist, right? Let me see. In death, members of Project Mayhem do have a name better than Meatloaf. Let me see. No wrench, no prob. What do you... No, Cat, you have a wrench. What are you talking about? What's going on? Guy LaDouche. Let me see. Tune thine own self be true. Hi, Aspa60. Just stopped in and noticed the ref in the paper to the Mindbenders. Check the 63 British film of the same name. Ooh, Aspa60. Coming in and like dropping a little teaser, you little nasty. All right, I'm going to check it out as soon as we get done. Thank you so much. LaRouche was right on some things and wrong on others. His struggles with John Markham are bad enough. Markham really screwed around with the Jeffrey McDonald case. And let me see. Morgana, hi. You are bang on with all you are finding and putting together. Well, thank you so much, ma'am. And let me see. Dana, Queen, Reese. Well, thanks, guys. The Executive Intelligence Review of Mr. Lyndon Hermile LaRouche Jr. were most times impeccable as researchers. And let me see. Sorry, not here, but well, I've got, I got you, Kat. Uh, I'm sorry. And hugs, heart hugs, all of that, guys. Thanks for being here. Uh, all right. So in regards to LaRouche, because like I said, I'm not a LaRouche head, but it doesn't mean that the dude's wrong all the time. Did he have an ax to grind? Probably. However, and the address, I can't find anything. But Virginia's working on getting the original magazine that's in that archive that I dropped in the link because I want to see high def pictures. I want to see that shop. I want to be able to find that shop because in the grand scheme of things of what's going on, from what I understand, the Church of Scientology is starting to present their narrative to the public that they're just out here helping people. You know, they're doing all these like outreach programs and this and that. Well, whatever, because I've shown you guys the process was doing that in 1970. They immediately ran out of California and they said, oh no, we're philanthropic. We're helping everybody, except for they're not. They're not. Because I'm also going to show you guys some other stuff because they got banned from that hospital that I showed you guys. I found that the other day. But let's go ahead and let's take a quick peek at the LaRouche article. Let me pull it up. Where are you? And... Okay. And I mean, I'm sorry, like LaRouche is being a little petty, but uh, I'm here for it. I'm really into it, quite frankly. I think that it's great, but let's go. Because he names Robert Miller in here, which, hey, is LaRouche helping us out? Maybe, maybe me. So this is EIR National, and this is uh, volume 16, number 23, June 2nd, 1989. Now, am I going to sit here and read all of this? Absolutely not. But LaRouche prosecutor linked to satanic cult. Okay, so down here. So he's talking about Markham specifically, John Markham. And let's go down here. So... On May 23rd, 1974, a second document was filed with New York amending the incorporation papers to change the name from Process Church to the Foundation Faith of the Millennium. Once again, the attorney of record was Markham. Was Markham just an outside counsel or was he himself a member? According to the Process Church's own literature, Markham appears to have been a quote-unquote lay member. In January 1974... The uh, process scene, a glowing account, is published of the Manhattan Church's opening of a thrift shop at 181 West 4th Street in Greenwich Village, run by Robert Miller and a group of lay processians. In the March 1974 issue, a box on page 22 reports on the success of the thrift shop and names Robert Lynn, Erica Bull Bullman, Joanne Palacini, John Markham, and Joshua Schoenhot as much involved. Yeah? That's it. 
I'm, I'm groundbreaking stuff, right? No, it's really not. However, that's a consistent name. That's someone that needs to be looked at. Because I've told you guys, it's going to be a weird fringe connection because that's just how these things work. And like I said, yeah, I think that LaRouche had an axe to grind and that's fair. Whatever. But it doesn't mean that the dude's wrong all the time. It's just not. But especially when it comes to the, uh, to the process stuff. You know what I mean? I'm not... It is what it is. Now, let me pull up my PowerPoint because y'all know that I was so excited when I found new stuff in the newspaper. I was like, ooh, I love when this happens. It's beautiful. Now, one of these, you guys have seen these photos most likely, and that's fine. But it was very exciting to find them in the newspaper and to see them being interviewed and in my personal opinion, guys, I think that we are just adding here to correct the historical record. That's what's important to me is the truth, right? Congrats. Oh, thank you so much, Jay Snyder. To Congrats on that to Grimston bit. You think you're excited? Feel these nipples. A funny line from Basketball. Let me see. Hold on. I'm missing some stuff. Professor Cameltoe. Oh, hi, Cameltoe. The Jeremiah Duggan case relating to LaRouche and the Schiller Institute is very suspicious. Well, the Schiller Institute is very suspicious, period. Let me see. The Manitou Springs, Colorado. I haven't gotten to Colorado yet, but we will, unfortunately, because uh, YouTube deleted my trench coat mafia video. Surprise! whatever. But uh, sorry, guys, because don't forget the process had their clown ministry in Colorado at a burn unit in a children's hospital. I'm not going to say anything else right now because I'm, I'm not ready to talk about Colorado, but Colorado gets really, really dark. Now, let me see. Hill Doggy Dog. Hi, Dana. Love your work regarding the Britishist process cult. Thank you so much, Hill Doggy. I appreciate that dating myself here, but so grateful we live in a time when all of this isn't trapped on microfiche. Yeah, I know. I agree. I, th I mean, don't get me wrong. I've always wanted to go and look at the microfiche, but like I'm a nerd. I just think that it would be so cool. Uh, but yeah, I'm glad that we have access to it. Let me see. Uh, let me see. Sorry, guys. I am trying. Oh, thank you so much. The old church radio service. I appreciate that. I sent that article to William Ramsey about LaRouche. That's awesome, Hill Doggy Dog. Yeah, William Ramsey's great. He's super smart and very kind. LaRouche lived in Riverdale among all the rich Jewish elites. I love LaRouche. He's been proven right over the ages. Where did you get that article? I straight up Googled LaRouche and uh, John Markham, but I put them in quotations. Because if you guys didn't know, when you put things in quotations in Google, it immediately filters out all the BS. The day that I learned that, it changed my life. You know what I mean? It really, really did. Um, now, let's go ahead and let's pull this up so I can show you guys these photos. Like I said, if you're familiar with the process, you've most likely seen these. But, oh, it just really did it for me seeing it in the papers, y'all. Uh, 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 uh. Love it, love it, love it. So, over here, we've got Brother Lars. And over here, we've got Father Malachi. <laughs> I'm just so happy. <laughs> You guys have no idea how happy this made me. I was like, oh my God, there they are. Um, and whatever over here, Cambridge, obviously they're talking about Massachusetts, but we are in 1971. Oh, that did it for me. Now, let me pull up the next one because this is where, well, hold on. I got to show you guys the uh, hospital stuff, right? Because, yeah, they got banned. Even though, you know, they were doing everything appropriately, but it just made people uncomfortable. Okay. So here we go. This is the Sunday Mirror, August 20th, 1972. A hospital bans Satan worshippers. Members of the process, religious cult whose beliefs include Satan worship, have been asked to stop visiting a hospital's psychiatric patients. This move by bosses of St. Mary's Abbott Hospital, West London, follows a report about the cults in last week's Sunday Mirror. Two cult members who run a play group for the Westminster Play Association are to be kept on. A spokesman said the group was run adequately and there was, quote-unquote, no hint of danger. Okay, 
whatever you say. Uh, just like with wheat, with the process, it's all opposite day for me. But that's just me. I don't know. I guess maybe I'm a jerk. Let me see. Where are we? Let me make sure. Toronto is full of Brits. The process church wouldn't be lonely. Yeah, they were They were thriving. Hey, thanks, Dana. Didn't know that. Didn't know what, Jandon? Let me see. Play group. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lots of kids. Lots of kids ministries. Lots of kids stuff. Because don't forget, they had Jimmy Savile in one of their earliest publications. And they had a clown ministry in Colorado in a children's hospital. Who else liked to dress up like a clown and be around kids for very nefarious reasons? Mr. John Wayne Gacy. And Eric G. was kind enough to send me the documentary, um, The Clown and the Candyman. So, you know. As we start moving our way down the timeline, these are things that we're going to be discussing. I already showed you guys that article with Gacy the other day where they're talking about that couple that was found with all the blood drained from their bodies. And right below it, John Wayne Gacy was in court. And people want to sit here and say that these things happen in a vacuum and they're totally isolated. And they're just madmen who just happen to get away with things. But like uh, this... This Candyman and the Clown or Clown and Candyman documentary, they make it damn clear that that was a massive operation. I wonder why the Son of Sam folks don't do the same. I don't know. Uh, what do I know, right? So here is the one on the right is where we're going to be focusing. Look out. Here comes the process, people. I still want to know who this hoe is because from another angle, she looks like a young Stevie Nicks and I'm kind of here for it, but not in this photo in particular. The city's newest religious cult features love and tithing and just a little bit of Satanism. Yeah. So there's Mother Callie and Father Malachi. And I don't know who these sus lords are, but this is from October 21st, 1973. Now, the next one is, here we are. <laughs> All right, so we've got the process talking about flying saucers uh, in 1973. And I thought it was interesting that they described the beginning of the process as an attempt to understand man's psychological nature, given off major, uh, you know, changing images of man and also Scientology vibes, like early Scientology vibes. But over here, the process has much to do before it establishes itself in New York. The work, however, has already begun. Early in August, in an effort to tap the brains of an ecumenical selection of theologians, a private seminar was held at the Park Lane in which de Grimston and some of the original processians threw questions at Harvey Cox, Arthur Gibson, that is Arthur Gibson of the Vatican, who testified on the Process Church of the Final Judgment's behalf and said that he would sell his sex issue on at his church on their porch if he had a church. That one. Richard Rubenstein, author of After Auschwitz and others. The topic, the redemption of Satan, was subordinate to the fact of the meeting itself. The processians were given the opportunity to see how more conventional, if not precisely more orthodox ecclesiastics, handled bizarre speculations from their particular traditions. The process, which has yet to develop a tradition other from a few nasty rumors and some tall tales, needed, to ex needed this exposure to begin to prepare themselves to make their claim on their share of the mainstream of American culture. Uh-huh. I bet. I bet they did. These people are full of crap, guys. I hope that I have established that. These people are full of crap as the day is long. Uh, you know. I don't, I don't know why I allow it to stress me out anymore. You know what I mean? It shouldn't. But it is kind of annoying. I'm just kind of postulating right now. It is annoying that they make it this hard to find the truth. But I hope that you guys are seeing as we move through this that it's done on purpose. And it is. 
Normal things should not be this difficult. Normal people should not be this difficult, right? But what do I know? Now, before we move on to the thing that, I don't know, I guess I'll take a vote in the chat if we're going to do it or not, but I want to remind everybody, particularly wheat, sorry, it is what it is, Uh, Little Miss all of a sudden has, you know, amazing memory or whatever, yeah? Your family was, (laughs) you and your family, quite frankly, uh, were trying to profit off of this situation. Right here. No one is willing to say where Harvey the dog is or why he has been taken. Carr, who runs a telephone answering service in Yonkers, is still trying to sell his story. At least one person is said to have offered to buy Harvey. Carr said the price wasn't good enough. Yeah? And the dog was given to Wheat a year prior, so August roughly. 1976. The dog is never out of car's sight under usual circumstances. Okay. Whatever you say. But look at this, man. Thriving. We are all thriving. We're living our best lives. Look at us. Getting paid. Getting made. Probably getting laid. hey oh, a a a. Look at him. Car seeks offer for story. Don't forget it. Don't forget it. Sam's price, 10 G's, baby. 10 G's. Yeah? That's the legacy that I see uh, of your family, Wheat. That is my opinion of your family. Sorry. Uh, Y'all know something. Y'all know something, man. I'm sorry. I don't buy it. I don't buy it for a second, dude. I just don't. She can cry and scream and blah, 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 blah. I don't care. Don't care. Don't care. Let me see. I was looking for dirt on the process and I ran across that article. It's amazing how all these scumbags are connected. Isn't it? Isn't it fascinating? But honestly, it makes more sense than just like a bunch of random people who are randomly allowed to do these things. It makes sense when it's a network of elitist, uh, whatever people want to call it. I call them demons, but they are allowed to thrive and survive and do certain things. Yeah, that makes sense. Because, you know, as we move forward through some of these things and we start talking about some of these crimes, we've already talked a little bit about Charles Lake and uh, Charles Ng and Leonard Lake. And cricket. But you know, once we get to Gacy, the process was well established. Obviously, I have to go back and kind of see what Mr. Savile was doing because, well, the process was hanging out in hospitals too. Yeah. And I don't think that Jimmy Savile was a British nobility. Robert Grimston was. He absolutely was. And it's fascinating because in that archive that I posted in there, guys, if you kind of dig around, there's some very interesting stuff, including one of the citations from that article that we read, uh, the Setian guy, the dude from the Temple of Set that was like simping for Kenneth Lanning from the FBI. So one of the articles that he cites is in there specifically, and it's kind of just discussing the history of the process and... uh, if it's just fate that Robert and Marianne, they met in Scientology and Marianne, just this mystery woman with, you know, this domineering presence. No, but it does state in there that uh, the solicitor, Mr. Bernard Solly, that was Marianne's friend. That was who was financing the process. He seemed to be a very high profile lawyer. So if that's true, then that's really interesting. And I'm trying to figure out what I can on him, but I just found that today. So cough, Lucy and Graves is a fed cough. <laughs> Savage was King Charles' good friend. Yeah, everybody was friends with uh, Savile. Everybody, including the Rolling Stones. Isn't that interesting? Because uh, Marianne Faithful. 
I'm not ready to talk about her yet. I got to build that up a little bit more. But Marianne Faithful, she's disgusting. Uh, but we'll be talking about her. And they don't do the same because Manny is related to them. You guys stop it. The Son of Sam folks need to stick to the narrative and leave the rest to the real investigators. Sus lords, I chortled. Hey, Dana, forgive me for asking. Did you dig up anything regarding the process cult and the Atlanta child murders? Um, I'm working on it. So I don't think that it's out of the question. There were rumors that uh, Wayne Williams, right? There were rumors that he was in the process. And I tell people all the time, everything deserves to be looked at critically. I am never going to tell anybody that they are crazy. Uh, I will disregard wheat. <laughs> Sorry. But um, in regards to looking at everything from an operational standpoint, from an intelligence standpoint, and the bigger picture, which is why every once in a while we step back, we look at other things that are going on. Uh, yeah, there's some really crazy stuff in the Ultimate Evil files that were sent to me, and I think that it's credible. The stuff that I know about the process uh, and allegations of trafficking up from Mexico and that doctor is completely disgusting, but I'm doing a very deep dive on him. I'm working on that for you guys right now because it's really fascinating. His early research was specifically about cannibalism, which I think is uh, kind of appropriate. Uh, but yeah, we're going to be going into all of that because there are certain individuals out here who literally mock the notion of Roy Cohn and some of these other parties being involved in this sort of underbelly cd trafficking network right this criminal organization i would call it like uh i don't know the satanic mob the demonic mob the demonic mafia i think it's super credible i think it is super credible and i'm grateful that eric g sent me that documentary uh the clown and the candy man uh because i think that the john wayne gacy stuff is legit too sorry uh the process didn't take care of their own kids uh, if you guys have not watched that documentary, Sympathy for the Devil, literally a child died from a gunshot in their house and uh, like babies were kept in closets and fed tea. Yeah, they didn't take good care of their kids. And I told you guys, Jonathan DePire's son wrote sort of a fan, not fan fiction, but like fiction mixed with truth. I don't know what you would call it. It's very Bainbridge-esque, but it talks about how terrible they were to their kids and how everybody was sleeping with everybody because they were doing, you know, you want to call it sex magic rituals, orgies, whatever they were. And he says, like, a lot of us don't know who our fathers are, but that is Jonathan DePire's son. And his name is Jonathan too. You can look up, literally Google Jonathan DePire book um, and it will come up, especially if you put it into quotes. Let me see. Let me hold on one second, guys. Who got blocked and why? What happened? What happened? I don't know. I don't know what's happening, guys. I'm sorry. The bushwhacker. Yeah, Maury was right. Very obvious what happened. He made my skin crawl as a child. Savage, Savile. That is. Yeah, Savile's disgusting. I really have not, like, prior to now, really looked into him. But just shows you the cult of personality, man. And the process was definitely more powerful than him. Absolutely, in my opinion. Let me see. Oh, you're very welcome, Hill Doggy. And you're not... Oh, okay. I don't know what's going on, guys. I'm going to let you guys handle the chat. Gadget sex nephew equals Stranger Things producer. What? Month? Huh? The show Stranger Things? Gadget sex family is still pretty creepy, even if the Carlton Gadget sex is dead. Process seems to have their nasty fingers everywhere. It's amazing how royalty can be so filthy and incestuous. Saturn always devours his children. There's three core groups. The main one who does that were called, guess what? The family. Yes. Yes, they were. Yeah. Because remember, guys, we've established, in my personal opinion, I'm not going to sit here and, like, you know, drive the point home or beat a dead horse, but Manson was a processian. Okay? 
we looked at that immigration report. We saw the reports from the uh, LAPD. Okay. Them girls were so in process labels on their clothes. It is what it is. Uh, it's not that I haven't looked into Savile at all. I just hadn't really looked into him prior to this. But, you know, I've already told you guys. What are they doing? What are, what are they doing? What do I think Best Friends Animal Society is doing right now? Because trust me, that ain't going nowhere. The approved animal charity on Leah Romini's website, Leah Romini of the Aftermath, Scientology, an ex-Scientologist listing a Scientology cult as an approved charity. She has blocked me, but I digress. Now, what do I think that they're doing now? Well, we've read that really crazy report that they were using more electricity than a small city. And that they were threatening to shoot people down with cruise missiles if they flew over the property. But you couldn't see any animals anywhere. It was like a ghost town, basically. Because they own a ton of property. I think that there is a very strong possibility. Weapons trafficking, drugs trafficking. But they are also doing some weird transhumanist sort of like medicine stuff out there. Straight up. And, uh, well, I, I don't know. They're looking for a bloodline. Why do you think that like nobility and royalty that you can go and look and there's like millions of books out there where they're tracing their genealogy? It's not because they want to know who grandpa is. That's not why uh, like 23 and Me was created. And this isn't me being noited. Uh, read the old newspapers, the really, really old ones, especially like from the UK way back in the day, the high society. They're trying to keep it in the family. And I think that they're looking for a bloodline. That's just my opinion. Because they're looking for something and it's not... Uh, I don't know. It's not how to live forever. It's how to preserve that perfection because they think that they're better than you and they think that they're better than me. But guess what? They're not. We've proven that because they've tried really, really hard to cover a lot of this stuff up, including the stuff with the process. But as we keep moving forward through these timelines and circling back and finding new things, the demons keep squirming and the cockroaches keep scattering. They're not so smart after all, because at the end of the day, they are super narcissistic and they cannot resist putting it in writing, right? Because they think that they're so legendary and they're so royal. Bite me. Let me see. Savile had a thing for fake eyes, just like Epstein. Look, wasn't that necklace thing that he wore uh, a fake eye from what I had read somewhere? I'm not entirely sure. Wynota Ryder plays one of the mothers, Genesis Peorage, whom Damien calls his aunt or godmother, lived with Wynona's family. Yeah, I'm not ready to get into, like, the music stuff, man. I just, nope, nope, not yet. We'll get there. Daniel Carlston Gadjusek was involved with intelligence, was in Iran after World War II in the 50s. Eventually, it will lead to what Kay Griggs revealed in her interviews, mining that crypto. Dana, do you know the do you know the more about what happened to Mary Ann with her being eaten by dogs? The authorities labeled it an accidental death, but knowing the process, it seems highly sus. Well, Timothy Wiley made a joke that she was mauled to death by dogs on the property. And I've kind of vaguely brought it up before, but this is a good time to bring it up again. All of the uh, founders that have been dying off at Best Friends, there's no death certificates for any of them. Where did they go? Why is the only obituary listed on the Best Friends website? It's not in the newspapers. Not one. Not one is listed in the newspapers. Why is it only listed on the Best Friends site? I showed you guys uh, the revival of the process by Mr. William Sims Bainbridge, where he talks about in the beginning of the book being uh, given a package 
from uh, Robert saying that here's four vials or four cylinders of my preserved DNA. Bring me back to life. I think that uh, it's not out of the realm of possibility that that's what Marianne was doing and what they have possibly done with everybody else. I've dug, guys. I've hunted. I like obituaries. I like factual reporting. So why is it just on the Best Friends website that these people's deaths are being announced? I don't know. Why is John Carr's cause of death redacted from his death certificate as well as Francis's sister who also died the same year in North Dakota? Hmm? And her husband was a politician. Someone riddle me that. So what traits are they looking for in the bloodline? Well, we're seeing in my personal opinion. Um, I don't think necessarily traits. I just, I don't know. I think that they're just looking for something specific. Maybe like what they envision is the original royalty, you know, which for each of them is them probably thinking that like it's their bloodline, right? Because this is literally why they've been going to war since day one. Keep the upper upper, keep the lower lower. You know what I mean? Let me see how many altars and how many people in a facility. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Sorry, I don't want to get lost. I suspect the whole... I suspect the holy blood, holy grail thing. That's a great point, Ivermectin. That's a good way to explain it, too. That simplifies it. Holy blood, holy grail. I like that. They are all narcissistic. I don't know that they're zombies, meatball. I mean, it's a possibility. I don't know. Why was Gadjusak studying cannibalism? That's just freaking weird, okay? Like, is that, is that what you uh, want to hang your hat on? Okay, do it. Let me see. They think they are sharing another entity. I clone tomatoes every summer. Ooh, I bet that they're very good. And you are very welcome, Racine, and inbreeders. Yeah, well, I mean, you could sit here and, like, call me a hillbilly, but, I mean, I'm sorry. Y'all are trying to keep it in the family. Yeah, uh, and that's why, uh, who is it? Jimmy Savile, Kevin Spacey. All those people didn't lose any of their, uh, you know, what are those little badges that they get from the queen, right? Whatever that little royalty thing is. None of them lost that stuff. You gotta be kidding me. It's a joke. Now, I debated playing this, but I do want to just play a little bit of it so you can all be haunted with me, even though it's so, so fun. So, in the uh, Terry Mori files... Uh, for the Son of Sam, for the ultimate evil. Because there's some real crazy stuff in there. And obviously I've tried to, like, refrain from just, like, throwing it all up. Yeah? But if Wheat wants to keep denying stuff, I'm literally gonna come on here and I'm gonna read, like, all the stuff that's in there about Wheat. Okay? Because didn't uh, another researcher investigator make a comment recently that like the file should just be made public so that the conspiracy stops which i'm like i don't think that you really mean that i just think that you're presenting it that way to people but i will it's not a threat these are records these are records that are here and i don't tell anybody what to think but there's some real wild shit in there about wheat and i mean real wild. And I don't think that all of it's wrong. However, in there, he had mentioned a radio show that the process had, a Mr. Ken McNaughton. Now, Mr. Ken McNaughton, from what I understand, and I don't disagree, he is very credibly implicated in one of the crimes from this time. I think he's a dangerous man. He is one of the founders of the church, of the Process Church of the Final Judgment, and I found the radio show. So you guys get to hear his voice. And honestly, their music selection, it hits. It's really good, but it's really, really creepy. So I'm going to try sharing this a little bit different because we're going to be listening together. So let me pick the different format. Okay, now you guys are obviously going to have to give me like the one whatever and let me know that it is working let me see 
but I was able to find this because of those files. Yeah. All right. So what do we look like here? Is this doing it the way that I wanted it to? No. Oh, hi. Okay. There we are. This is how I wanted to do it. Now, hold on. Cause I think it just screwed everything up. And if the audio is super loud, tell me I tried to, uh, make it not. I don't really know if I can explain that better. So this says the Walter J. Brown Media Archives and Peabody Awards Collection. So this is from Head to Heart. And this is the opening show of the Process Church of the Final Judgment weekly radio show, guys. So tell me we're going to go, okay? From Head to Heart, each Sunday night at 12.45, we bring you a program that's new and different and exciting. It's a program for you that includes studio guests, music, telephone calls, comedy, drama, and some surprises. My name's Ken McNaughton, and I hope you'll join me and my friends. We're coming to you live, and we're with you all the way, from head to heart. This part creeps me out really bad. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if I know what that is. Well, what do you know? A brand new show from head to heart, and Vicky's going to be explaining the meaning of the title in a moment. But who are we, and what are we going to be doing for you? Well, my name's Ken McNaughton, and we're coming to you live in the Big Apple, and we're going to be coming to you every Sunday at this time, 12.45 to 2.30, right here on 99X in New York. Tonight we have friends poised all around the North American continent ready to wish us well on this opening night. We have Dr. Herbert Phil, MD, author of The Mental Breakdown of a Nation. And that is it. I'm not going to play the whole thing. I am going to drop this in here. That way you guys can listen to that. And I'm sorry if that was so loud. I'm sorry, guys. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That's it. I got some ones and people said it wasn't too loud. I want to know what Peyton's place is, though. I want to know if, where they stole that from, because that would be hilarious. That would be amazing. Uh, and I would love to uh, be able to show that specifically. That would be great. Mental breakdown. What? My dog is freaking out. Yeah, like that whole like, like all of that. I was like, oh, uh, what's happening? But then they're playing like Blondie, Heart of Glass, and uh, The Who. Like, they played some awesome music, and there's so many episodes in. So many. I think that you guys will really enjoy it. Old, old soap opera. Huh. I'm going to have to look into that. That's fascinating. But that is Ken McNaughton. I think it's just, I don't know, it makes it real. It makes these people real, and they need to be real. Oh, it's really important to me. We got to put these things into context. But I mean, that was from uh, Terry Maurice Files, guys. So that's great. I think that it's uh, a very interesting way to step into sort of the mind or the vibe that they were trying to put out specifically. And I'm obviously going to be listening to every single episode unfortunately, because they do name uh, other church members in the titles of these. I know these church members. I know every single one of their names, and I need to know what they're saying because they're going to say something. They always do. It's very inevitable. Um, but I think for now, I think that that's all that we have. Let me make sure. I'm not going to like reshow the stuff with, uh, you know, wheat and all of them saying X, Y, or Z after the fact. Actually, I'm going to show you one more thing from the files because this is about Phoenix House specifically. Because I told you guys about the vehement denial in regards to uh, Michael being at Phoenix House. Now, I don't know who these people are. Okay? I don't. Don't rake me over the coals. Don't care. But this is a conversation 
I'm assuming, uh, with Maury Terry. Or t did I, I call him Terry Maury? Damn it. I don't know. I'm sorry. Anyways, so they're talking about wheat being in North Dakota, February 1977. Don't know if that's true. This is talking about John Carr's death. But right here. Michael had tried to convert her to Scientology to be better able to cope with death or the idea of it. He had learned at Phoenix House in New York about how to deal with drugs and alcohol. I am presuming that this is either Wheat or Linda, which I believe is John Carr's ex-wife. Yeah? And again, I'm not saying that anything in these files is the gospel, guys. I'm just not. However, I'm also not going to toss it out because certain people want to rake, uh, you know, Terry Mori, Mori Terry over the coals because they had a poor experience with him or, you know, later in life he, you know, went on a disinformation campaign. I'm not calling anyone a liar and I'm not telling anyone what to think. But the fact of the matter is, is that when it comes to the stuff about the process, what's in the book, what's in the original book, that is right. And Ed Sanders was right too. And they both had so much information that they were not able to put in those books. So you can, you know, like call me simps or uh, whatever, maristas, whatever other stupid name. It's easy to come online and uh, like degrade everybody, right? Yeah, it's really simple. But I'm not here for that. I'm not going to degrade anybody and I'm not going to tell anybody what to think. All I care about is the truth. And the fact of the matter is, is when you step back and look at this objectively, there's something very wrong. This is a conspiracy. It's not a theory. Uh, and we have a long way to go because if we are working through all of this and then going to Mexico and trafficking and Gacy and Danny Rollins and well, you know, uh, who else is named in those files? I've seen it at least one time as Mr. Leonard Lake. Didn't know that. Didn't know that before I came on here and talked about Leonard Lake. I didn't know that Leonard Lake was named in these files. So, and I already told you guys, the Atlanta child murders, that is something that has been in the back of my mind that is very important to me. And so once we get to that time, we're going to be going through it just like we did with Cielo. But I think that we made a good argument for the things that we did. You know what I mean? Let me see. Yeah, I don't know who's Yan, but yeah, that's awesome. Peyton Place was the name of a fictitious town. The very name of a novel. This was changed from a Texas town spelled Peyton. If she says Maury Terry, Jandon drinks. If she says Terry Maury, Jandon drinks a double. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. Thank you, Ivermectin. That's very kind of you. And good night, Jandon. And let's look to the OTO. They sued Maury Terry and he had to, to delete any references to them in the ultimate evil. I didn't know that. I need to see that damn lawsuit then. Because all the stuff that I was able to find about the process was Ed Sanders lawsuit in the UK. Straight up. I'm going to find those files. I'm going to find that court record. I can find it. Let me see. And narcissism spills the beans every time. Yeah, they got a primetime slot for their show, 1230 a.m. When only the lonely are listening. <laughs> I thought that they were like kind of like trying to be spoopy and edgy. Like, hello, we're on at 1230 every Sunday night. We're not going to tell you that we're the process, but we are going to uh, slip in some subliminal jihad. Yeah. Lots of Gadjusek chatter. Keyword search, Jesse Morawi. I will search that mode 85. Thank you so much. And let me see. Yeah, the ATL child murders are... They're very upsetting. They are very upsetting. But I'm sure that I missed something. I've already been going for an hour 20. I am going to leave it here. We obviously have a long way to go. We're nowhere near done. Uh, you know, I'll get back to everyone as soon as I can. Wait, if you're going to refute me, bring those receipts, sister, because I ain't taking anything else. And it's certainly not going to be a cropped screenshot of a record that I've already shown. Watch the stuff. Watch it, wait, and then come in my chat.
I'm not going to kick you out. I don't censor people. I trust my mods to handle what they do, you know, but I don't, I don't censor people unless they're disrespectful to others. You want to come in here and take me to task? Let's do it. But bring those receipts, girl, because I've brought mine and I have a lot more. I can't do everything at once. So I'm going to run the exit and I will talk to you guys very, very soon.